Welcome to our review on polymer problems. First thing then, we've got two key terms we need to know the meanings of. Non-biodegradable is a substance that can't be broken down by microorganisms, and a biodegradable substance is one that can be broken down by microorganisms. So if we think about some of these problems that we're seeing with polymers, then the picture at the bottom gives you some idea. On the left hand side you can see the fact that because these polymers are non-biodegradable then they just don't break down. So we actually have these areas around the world that have just accumulated huge amounts of plastic. So we actually have these things called actual vortexes where we've got in the oceans these massive areas of plastic that just sit there years and years on end just not breaking down. If we've got things like those little can holders then you can see the problem in the middle picture. If we just literally leave those can holders intact as those polymer little rings, then if a small animal obviously gets inside one of them, then obviously it's not a big problem as it's a baby, but as it then grows, the polymer is only going to stretch so far. And you can see the deformity caused in that little creature there because the plastic's not giving anymore and those living cells can't actually stretch around it so you just get the deformed shape in their shells and on the right hand side of the picture you can see a trigger fish there that is actually just trying to eat a plastic bag and if animals eat plastic then it's going to kill them and there's actually a very good video you can find on YouTube which shows you an uninhabited island where there's just so many dead birds because they've eaten plastic that's washed up and they've eaten out at sea and so forth and there's just skeletons of them everywhere and when you look in their remains they're just filled with bits of plastic. So once we've generated all these polymers we do need to dispose of them once they've reached the end of their useful life. One method of doing this is by just sending them to landfill. There are a few issues with landfill though no one really wants a landfill on their doorstep because they don't exactly look nice. They tend to have a rather unpleasant smell, not because of the polymers, but because of what we've put into the polymers. And because we're obviously throwing away a load of things inside those polymers, like food waste and so forth, then we're going to attract rats and gulls to the area, which obviously no one wants happening on their doorstep. The second method of disposal then is burning. Now what we've got to make sure of is that if we're going to burn polymers that we do this at a high temperature. If the temperature isn't high enough then we're going to generate toxic gases as we make them. So this is why obviously your science teacher has a go at you when you try burning pens and rulers and random things like this in the Bunsen burners because the temperature they're getting to in the lab are not high enough to stop toxic gases being made and no one wants to breathe in toxic gases at school. What we'll also find is that if the heat energy that we're generating from burning these polymers isn't actually used, then we're actually just wasting a resource through burning it. Our third method of disposal then is recycling. So these days a lot of councils have actually got plastic recycling as part of their weekly or bi-weekly rubbish collections. The downside to recycling all these plastics is that we've got to sort them into different types. Now this is usually a very problematic issue for our councils because it's quite difficult and it can be quite expensive because what you'll find is that there's a whole range of different types of plastic and you can see this if you just look at some of the plastic containers that you've got around your house and look for the little triangle made of the arrows, the number inside it tells you the type of plastic and those different types of plastic have to be treated in different ways. So we've got to separate out all those different types of plastic, which is not an easy task, and anything that's not easy is going to be expensive. One thing that scientists are trying to do to help with all these issues is they're now developing biodegradable polymers. So these are ones that are going to be able to be broken down by microorganisms. So to give you an example then, what we can do is add starch to the polyethene, which is the stuff that we make lots of our carrier bags out of, so that when it actually gets wet, bacteria will break down the starch and that only leaves very small pieces of polymer. So in doing that, what we're seeing is not having this problem of these large pieces of polymer lying around for so many years. 
The other one we've got are that we've now got these dishwasher tablets that are wrapped in a plastic that we no longer have to peel off before we put the tablet in our dishwasher. You just put the whole thing in and then as it gets wet, that polymer will dissolve.